Hi, my name is Caleb Juma and welcome to the Rise of a Chosen Generation channel. My passion is to inspire everyday Christians like me and you to know their God, to rise up and to do mighty exploits. So I hope that the content on this channel blesses you. And also, do follow us on our Facebook channel, The Rise of a Chosen Generation. If you do have any comments, if you do have any feedback that you'd like to share with us, we'll be looking forward to hearing from you. Do share this with your friends, with your family, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for joining us, and I hope you enjoy this message. Come on, everybody. Let's just take this moment to worship the Lord and to just invite Him into this place. He's worthy to be praised, oh, and yes, the world will bow down and say you are king, every man will bow down and say you are king, so let's start right now. Why would we wait? King of glory, feel this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. King of glory. just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. Come on, sing with me. And yes, the world will bow down and say, sing every man, every man will bow down and say, you are king. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? We will praise you now, Lord, in victory. Sing, King of glory, King of glory, feel this place. I just want to be with you, Lord, I just want to be with you. The 
Let's lift up a sound of worship unto the Lord in this moment. Oh, 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 oh. King of glory. Oh, release the sound of victory in this moment, children of God. As we worship the Lord, He is worthy to be praised and adored. We pray you feel this place, Lord. So today I'm going to share very briefly from the second chapter of the book of John. John happens to be my favorite gospel and I remember not so long ago as I was going through it and I got to the second chapter, the Holy Spirit opened my eyes to a few principles of the pres- that we can apply in the presence of God and I just thought it might be best for me to share that today. Um, Okay, so without wasting much time, let's quickly turn to John 2. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and it reads, On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said, said to her, Woman! What does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. Now there were set there six water pots of stone according to the manner of purification of the Jews containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Draw some water now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. When the master of the feast had tasted the water and that was made wine and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew. So the master of the feast called the bridegroom and he said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine and when the guests have drunk, well drunk, then they're inferior. But you have kept the good wine until now. This beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. Amen. Father, we thank you for this moment. Even as I begin to share your word, I pray that you continue to breathe upon the words that I should I shall speak in this moment. For you have declared that your words are spirit and life. So I pray in the name of Jesus that they may make us more aware of who you are and that they may speak life to any dead parts in our lives. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. So first and foremost, just going through this scripture that we've read, the Bible says in the first verse that on the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. Now take note of this part. It says now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. So the first part says Jesus' mother was there. And then verse 2 says that Jesus was invited. So knowing the nature of the Holy Spirit, the nature of God, 
He's omnipresent, but he doesn't manifest himself everywhere. So to experience the manifestation of the presence of God, there always has to be an invitation. The Lord doesn't manifest himself where he's not welcome. You know, so there always has to be that invitation. And indeed, an invitation can take many forms. For example, the Bible tells us where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be there with them. So that means in the gathering of the saints, there is a promise of the presence of God. But even with that promise, if you really read it through, you'll find that it's a promise of his presence, but not necessarily of the manifestation thereof. So that brings us to the next point. The Bible says, and when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. And his mother said to the servant, whatever he says to you, do it. So now we're at a place where Jesus is actually in a place, but we find that there's lack. The answer is in our midst but we still find that we have problems. There's still a whole lot of issues that surround us. Why? His presence has been promised. His presence in this moment has been given, but there still hasn't been a manifestation. So that brings us to our second point. When we are in the presence of God, we need to learn to place a demand on his person. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you will find knock and the door shall be open to you so this is the promise that god has given us that when we ask we will receive so when we do enter into the presence of god we need to also learn to place a demand on his presence think about the story of blind bartimaeus he, he, he cried out son of david have mercy on me jesus actually came closer to him but the thing is he still remained blind until Jesus asked him, what would you have me to do for you? And he says, I want to see, you know. Funny enough, Jesus could actually see that this man was blind, but he still asked the guy, what would you have me to do for you? That shows us that there is a certain level of demand that we need to place on his presence in order to get a result. For example, even when we approach his presence in reading the word, Going into John 3, we find Nicodemus, he went to Jesus by night and asked him questions. And this is how we now have John 3 verse 16, the most quoted scripture in the world. Because one man dared to place a demand on the presence of God by asking a question. The more questions we ask, the more answers we get. And the more answers we get, the better our understanding becomes. And as our understanding is enhanced, our thought patterns begin to change. And when our thought patterns begin to change, our entire life is affected and we begin to live as we ought to live. First and foremost, learn to invite the Holy Spirit into a moment to place a demand on his presence. Not like a gluttonous, greedy man who's like, I want food now, but like the sons that we are approaching him. As the Bible tells us that, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace so that we may obtain mercy in our time of need and there's never been a moment that we've never needed Jesus so moving right along to our third point Mary the mother of Jesus says to the servants that do as he says and verse 6 reads now there were set there six water pots of stone according to the manner of purification of the Jews containing 20 or 30 gallons. These are very large containers. And Jesus told them to fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. So that goes the third, there goes the third point. We need to learn to obey when the instruction comes from the presence of God. And partial obedience is still disobedience. Conditional obedience is still disobedience. We find in the story that Jesus tells them to fill the water pots and they went on and did so and the Bible tells us that they filled it to the brim. You know, the measure of the fullness of a thing is actually seen in the overflow, especially when it comes to um, a life of ministry, when it comes to the normal Christian life. Fullness is measured in overflow. 
we cannot come we cannot actually say this man is full of the holy spirit until we see it in your action until we see in how you love the people around you until we see it in how you express the person of 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 Jesus Christ in your character until we see actually walking in the great commission that is actually a measure of fullness and here's the thing it's not only about doing stuff but it's about becoming who God has called you to be and actually expressing his person not just going about doing what the bible says but going about expressing the image of god and expressing the person of jesus christ there's a very big difference sometimes because religion will tell you to do things but the relationship and true christianity will tell you to become like christ so you can do naturally our complete obedience will always form within us the character of christ and of course it's seen in our action isn't it so moving on to the last point he said to them draw some out and now take it to the master of the feast and they took it when the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from but the servants who had drawn the water knew so basically these containers as big as they were were actually used for washing so that already means try to imagine yourself bathing <laughs> okay that was in the deep but after a long day's journey these people didn't have cars so they used to walk and they're all muddy their hands were not sanitized thank god there was no covid-19 in those days but their hands were not sanitized and this is the water that they had to use to wash themselves so now when they fill those bowls we already know that there's a little bit of contamination in that isn't it they filled the water bowls and now the servants know that in this water bowls there's what there's water could be slight contamination i don't know if they actually thought about that but jesus told them to draw some and take it to the master of ceremonies the servants obeyed and did as jesus had instructed took and took it to the master of feast and this was the master of feast response the master of the feast called the bridegroom and he said to him every man at the beginning sets out the good wine and when the guests have well drunk then the inferior you have kept the good wine until now so it was after that act of obedience well it was in that act of obedience that we now saw a manifestation of the power of god it's then that we now saw the manifestation of the presence in that moment there was results that were yielded because a man dared to believe a man dared to walk in obedience and to believe god even after we've invited the holy spirit into a place our hearts may remain closed to him you know sometimes it can be because of familiarity or we are very much used to this whole let's welcome the holy this whole prayer where we say let's welcome the holy spirit into the place and then you get so used to the routine but you then forget that this is actually the king of glory and the bible tells us that lift up your heads o ye gates and let the king of glory come in who is the king of glory the lord strong and mighty we need to understand that when we welcome him into a place this is god himself in whom there is everything so when he comes into a place he doesn't come empty handed so to speak he comes as the solution not to give solutions but he comes as the solution and if we are not able to place a demand on his person then we may not be able to come out of that place with the solution that we need of course sometimes there is prayers that we cannot actually pray in a moment because it might be heavy on our hearts but the bible tells us in romans 8 and 20 in romans 8:26 that sometimes we do not know what to pray as we ought but the holy spirit makes intercession on our behalf with groanings that cannot be uttered it's in those moments that when we begin to place a demand the lord responds because his ear is not too deaf to hear when he responds there has to be a response from our end also when he releases a word when he releases an instruction 
what then becomes our response in that moment it always has to be in obedience to embrace the word that he has released in that moment and run with it you know that's when we need to dare to believe what the lord has said if he has declared a truth about who we are if he has outlined our purpose in spite of our inadequacies we need to understand that he has already equipped us therefore we need to dare to believe and walk according to what he has said in